thank you everybody for joining today's session. Uh, the session's title is Grading with Heart, How to Design Authentic Assessments and Rubrics. My name is Irene Soriel. I'm on the Course Hero Educator community team. Uh, also from the Course Hero team, we have my colleague Kamal, who will be our behind the scenes star managing everything Zoom related. It's my great pleasure today to introduce Dr. Stephanie Spiker. Dr. Spiker is the Digital Fluency uh, Faculty in Residence at the Weber State University. She specializes in the implementation of classroom learning communities and the bridging of social justice ideology into exper experiential learning education methodology. Uh, she was also recently awarded the Presidential Teaching Excellence Award at her university. We're thrilled to have Dr. Spiker here with us today. Before I hand the mic over to our amazing speaker, I'd like to go over a few quick technical notes. So today's session will involve breakout rooms. So um, you, uh, if, you're on any, if you run into any technical difficulties whatsoever, please do not hesitate to chat, uh, message me or my colleague Kamal directly in the chat via a private message and will help out. Also, uh, please note that this session is live captioned, so you can uh, use the CC button at the bottom of your Zoom screen to turn on subtitles if you need them. Sometimes you'll have like three dots on the right uh, bottom corner, click on the, these three dots to get the turn on subtitle um, uh, message. Uh, lastly, if you have any questions for our speaker, please feel free to submit them to the general chat. We'll be keeping track of these on these questions as they come in, and I'm hopeful we'll have some time for Q&A as the session progress. Uh, now, with that out of the way, and without further ado, I'd like to welcome uh, our speaker, Dr. Spiker, to the virtual stage. Awesome. Thank you all so much. And I'm so grateful to be here. Uh, as I get go ahead and get my screen ready to share, um, in full disclosure, you're going to hear some uh, background music and, uh, and so on, probably like many of you. Um, I am in uh, kind of on vacation. Uh, I am at Glacier National Park. Um, I love this summit. It is a highlight of my summer and I didn't want to miss it. So thank you for being flexible with me. I'm being as I'm creating with heart and being authentic um, in this session. As we begin, um, I want folks to get prepared. So Kamal, could you please go ahead and share the Wakelet link into the chat for everybody? Um, up at the top of this screen here, you'll see there's a scan code and you can go ahead and you can take, you can click on that scan code if you like, that'll take you to our Wakelet page that we're going to use for our workshop today. Um, and also the link that just went into the chat and I'm going to pull up, I'm just going to show you here what that's going to look like when you get in there. So it's gonna take you to a page that's gonna look like this. Um, I love Wakelet. I don't know if some other folks probably know Wakelet too. I'm sure many of you do. It's a great tool. I'm just using it today for our session, but you can see that you can use this in a lot of ways. But here, um, all the materials that you're gonna to need to participate today are here. This is the slides and then a bunch of resources that I will get to definitely within the next hour. But I wanted folks to be sure that you have access to that, to that Wakelet page. Okay, so give folks a minute to get in there. Oh, right on. Thanks, Michelle, for sharing that. Um, I know, it, and I'll just share, this is normally I would not be doing, um, and I'm sure probably you can appreciate this, but I've been trying to get to Glacier for 10 years and um, we moved out West and then been trying to get to a camp spot. So it has been amazing. Um, I already had a bear encounter. So I'm happy to be in a coffee shop um, with a nice cup of uh, coffee. Okay. So um, great. So as folks go ahead and you can pull that up, um, I know we already kind of started with folks typing into the chat a little bit of where you're from. <clears throat> We'd love to get a sense of just where everybody's coming from today. And um, you, if you have access to the annotate, whoops, to the, to the, um, oh my heavens, hold on everybody. If you have access to your annotate tools in your Zoom, if you're familiar with that, um, it should be right on your toolbar or under your more settings if you have access to annotate. And what I'd love for you to do, 
is if you could go ahead and you can type in through a text box into where you're located. Awesome, we can see where Melissa is. Um, you're also welcome just to use a stamp. There's a heart stamp, there's different things that you can go ahead and put onto the map. This gives us a sense on where folks are. And again, no worries, just have some fun as you're practice, practicing with annotation tools. You're also welcome just to throw into the chat where you're coming from. That gives us a sense um, so we can see. Awesome, everybody. Look at this. Gosh, we've got, come. look at folks from South Africa, New Jersey, Texas, Illinois, Massachusetts, um, Georgia. So the Kingdom of Bahrain, um, Florida, Chicago. Oh my gosh, West Virginia. Um, this is fantastic, everybody. Um, right on Baltimore. I grew up in Baltimore. Darlene, fantastic. Another Utah, right on. That's where I'm born and that's where I live now. I'm from Ogden, Utah. So this is great to see Sri Lanka, Texas. So as you can see, we've got a global community. Hong Kong, this is fantastic. Southern Philippines today. Um, I am in awe. I am humbled and I am so excited about this time that we get Get to be with everybody today and again maybe some of you are cruising which would be neat um as we can see folks in the ocean as we're we're moving around um so again awesome greg i know it's like so amazing um so this is fantastic again the, and why i like doing this just off the get-go we got to get a sense of who's here today right we got to who's our community who are the faculty that are just feeling like you are that want to learn these tools and skills because we can work together um, as we're doing this work so fantastic everybody all right so um with that whoops hold on one second i'm going to go ahead and i'm just going to clear those for now we're going to just we'll go ahead and pull those off and and uh, we'll get ahead and move on. Feel free to keep typing into the chat if you're just coming on in, where you're coming from, which is great. And, um, and then we'll take it from there. So welcome to today's session. Um, this session was advertised a, as a um, hands-on, more interactive session. And um, so I would just say, be as engaged as you would like. I know it's after lunch for a lot of folks. You might just be settling in, being like, yeah, I'm chilling out, right on. Um, you'll have an opportunity, though, to to um, to work on your own per se with some tools. Because my hope is is that you're gonna you're gonna gain some resources that you can use immediately come fall. Okay, so let's look at our welcome and our objectives for today. So we just got a sense of who is here and why. I want to talk a little bit about what is authenticity and what does that mean for us as faculty and why is that relevant. We also want to talk about this is one of my favorite things to say, alignment, alignment, alignment. And we'll talk more about why things, why does the work that we do have to align? And we'll talk more about that. And then we're actually gonna get into designing some authentic assessments and giving you an actual tool to help you design authentic um, and um, authentic assessments in your a variety across your content areas. And we'll talk about designing authentic rubrics to help you measure those assessments. And then we'll wrap up from there. We really only have an hour together today, so this will go, this is going to go very quickly. Um, so I just want to point out, though, I've got this little text over here. Um, and powerful teaching, we can see powerful teaching um, begins with measurable outcomes and concludes with authentic assessments. Selecting relevant, authentic, and real-world assessments, which are aligned to course and program level outcomes is critical. That's the most important part of our work. Whoops. Okay, so again, um, this is just a little, this is me. Um, you can see I look a little bit different today, but this is my usual glacier look right there. <laughs> and um, there's my email. As um, Irene mentioned, I am from Weber State University um, in Ogden, Utah, and open to collaborating. So I just share that because hopefully after this session, we'll be able to stay connected with each other. Okay, so before we formally begin, what I would like to do is share a short video clip, but I wanna pose this out to you and it might seem a little elementary in nature, but I want you to think about what is your superpower? Just take a moment and think about, gosh, what might be my superpower, okay? 
And we're gonna watch a short little video here, which will get you thinking about superpowers. And then I'll talk a little bit more about why I even think this is important and why is understanding our superpowers relevant to assessment. Okay, here we go. What is your superpower? Hmm. Um, I like to think that I'm charming. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Lego sets because I love building Legos. Even though they're hard, they're pretty quick. I'm really good at making a trumpet noise with my mouth. Like I just was born being good at that. I can make a bird sound like a real bird sound. I have two superpowers. I can make anybody smile. And the other one, <laughs> I can fart on command. No! <laughs> we'll take your word for it. <laughs> My superpower is definitely dance. I could do somersaults. I can camouflage because I got camouflage pants and camouflage shoes from Amazon. I don't know, I'm really good at math. Math. Reading. Making stuff. I'm actually very good at mimicking healthy versions of junk food. The shouting count. I guess my stoicism, and I get that from my mom. I'm comfortable with anybody. I can talk to anybody, anywhere. I could sit down in a room with you, and I could just talk for at least an hour straight. I can host a badass party. Even if I'm not at my own party or in a big group of people, I don't try. I just always feel myself trying to include everyone that's around me. I'm a good singer. I'm a good cook. And I don't judge. I think I'm really good at connecting with animals. I work at a shelter and I feel like a lot of nervous animals just like naturally connect to me. I'm a great friend. I can confidently say I make everyone feel loved and comfortable. I think I'm very good at helping people not be anxious because I get very anxious and I know all the ways to help people not be anxious. Well, when the muses are playing, I can really ride up a storm. I just keep going. I don't care how exhausted I am or how tired I am. If something needs to get done, it gets done. My superpower is swim. I think that if I don't swim, probably I could die. I go out and walk every single morning for two miles. That's very important and very natural for me. I think making people feel comfortable. I am a great listener. I can put people at ease. I think I can communicate with people, and I really like communicating with different people. My superpower is empathy. I have the ability to connect with people and feel how they're feeling and talk to them as if their emotions are my emotions. Awesome. So this is fantastic. As folks are going ahead and typing into the chat, um, you know, go ahead and, and put in what, what is your superpower, right? So thinking about what that is and why do I, why did I share this video and why do I want you to think about your superpowers? And it is because of this. It is, whoops, hold on, let me just get out of there. Um, it is critical that when we assess our students that they feel empowered, they feel strong, they feel motivated, they feel like that they are demonstrating what they have learned. Versus sometimes when we choose assessments to give to our students, it, also, it often does the actual opposite, that we make students feel depleted, um, def deflated, um, um, not um, capable, um, and so we want to really think deeply as faculty is what are we doing to deliberately create moments where our students can embrace their superpower. So I love seeing, I love seeing this right now um, in terms of what's coming into the chat, right? So we've got um, connection, empowering others, generating ideas, um, empathy, and so on. So continue to write that in. Um, thanks everybody. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's go ahead and let's uh, just off the bat, let's talk about a definition of assessment. 
So, and again, there's lots of definitions and I'll just share off the get-go. I am a teacher educator. That's my, um, that's my, my primary wheelhouse. I also teach in our women and gender studies program at Weber State, but my background, I was a social studies teacher for 25 years, and then I was a school principal for five years. Um, so I come to this with teacher education base um, and have spent more time than I probably would like to say, um, learning and talking about assessment. So when we're talking about assessment, it's the systematic process, right, of gathering, um, of, of uh, gathering, interpreting, and acting on our data. I remember the very first time I gave a test, and I was so excited because I was like, oh, yeah, finally, and I was grading, grading, grading. And I thought, well, what am I going to do with all this data? And how does this data then help me to improve subsequent learning. That's the biggest piece that you can see on this slide in bold, is that we just don't want to assess for the sake of assessing. We must be assessing because the data then helps us make better decisions for our students in the future. All right, so here's a question for all of you. As we're talking about grading with heart, right? How do we bring compassion, authenticity, and real life experiences into the assessment choices that we're making. So let's go ahead and I just wanna pose this question with you to start. So what does authentic assessment mean to you? Feel free, you can throw that into the chat. Go ahead and um, you know, just take, a, just take a, a, a minute to think, you know, when you think about what is authentic assessment, what does that mean to you? you go ahead and you can throw, throw any thoughts that you have into the chat. Great, so we've got real life application. Um, again, practical, it's personalized. Um, types of activities students are likely to experience in their careers. Yes, you know, if we think about these students are coming into higher ed because we're trying to prepare them, right? For the future, for our future, they must be gaining real life and authentic experiences. What a person knows, excellent. Um, I want the students' thoughts, ideas. Yes, Emily, uh, Marjorie, testing based on real life skills needed. Yes, um, Edgar, discovering the talents the students have. These are fantastic. Um, yes, with heart, real life applications. So again, we can see we can see um, what folks are feeling, and, and I think that we're all on the same page. Meaningful, related to the career, preparing them, realistic, right? I mean, I can remember how many times maybe some of you have been in a situation where you're like, um, "Why am I being tested on this?" I never even, the teacher never even talked about this in class. How is this even relevant to what we're learning about? So it's critical, right? We want our students to feel like the time that they have spent with us was time well worth it and that they have come out better on the other side. Excellent, excellent. I love this. Keep throwing this into the chat, everybody. Keep throwing it in. So when we talk about authentic assessments, um, these are often used synonymously with alternative assessments or performance assessments. So, and these are terms that we use a lot um, in education that we talk about performance assessments are often authentic or real life because, and not like a performance like, yeah, yeah, I'm putting on my tap shoes. It's more like, okay, I'm gonna perform a skill, I'm performing a task, I'm performing something I've learned in my course that now I'm going to replicate and show that I've actually learned. So we can see examples, demonstrations, debates, field work, simulations, um, problem-based learning, so on. So these are great examples here. And I'm sure this is just the beginning. I know many of you have probably engaged in lots of different types of authentic assessments with your students. These are just some examples. I encourage us to break free of the typical test, right? Because we're in an age right now. In fact, I was talking to Kamal and Irene before the session about um, technology and how much our, we all know, we don't have to bring this up, how much has changed in the last 18 months, right? But we, we any student can get online and find the answer to any of our tests, right? We've been sitting and listening to these sessions. So it's a question of how do we make the time that they're with us and those authentic assessments even more valuable. Excellent, great. And um, Timothy Jones, thank you for your comment. Um, I see that, that's fantastic. Yay, Charmaine, yes, okay. So we're gonna keep going here, mindful of our time. So key points. Here's the biggest, one of the biggest takeaway here is assessment is ongoing. This isn't just like a one and done or a one hit wonder. Assessment is an ongoing process aimed at understanding and improving student learning. Um, and because again, the key is transfer. So we want our students to transfer what they're learning from with us into other coursework, their jobs after they leave the university and graduate school, so on. So remember that it's just so much more than collecting data. 
when we're when we're designing our assessments. So this slide here is comparing authentic assessments to traditional assessments. And trust me, I and I just want to say this, there is a time and a place for all of these. It's just a question of, of being very meticulous and methodical, deliberate and purposeful in when and how we use these choices. So again, you know, when we're using authentic assessments, it, it really helps us um, it really helps us interpret, it's qualitative. Um, it, it helps us um, reveal parts of that teaching and learning process versus we can see often in our traditional assessments, it's the end product. These are isolated facts. Often it's low level content. It's not that higher order critical thinking that we're hoping to get to with our students. And again, I, I give quizzes, I give traditional assessments. But when I, when I think about the the big, the big assessments, the big takeaways that I want students to have in, from the time that they're with me, I want these to be authentic, um, real life practical application assessments. I like this graphic a lot because it helps us get a sense of, often as faculty, we can get really lost in like, what am I supposed to like, what, what's, what's the most important thing? you know, that students need to walk away with. And so I really like this slide because it helps me think about um, these enduring understandings, the big ideas that I want students to walk away from my course with. Notice that's that circle right there in the middle, what we call those enduring understandings versus important to, and to know and be able to do and worth being familiar with. Now, what I like about this is notice that those enduring understandings that should be where we focus those authentic assessments versus those worth being familiar with. That can be our traditional quizzes and tests because our students are gonna get that information over and over and over again. And they have access to that very easily at their fingertips. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I want to introduce you to a specific tool that I like. And this is from Will, um, Wiggins and Mateague. This is from Understanding um, by Design or Backward Design, which is a um, theoretical framework that um, we, a lot of us use in teacher education when we're, when we're thinking about teaching and learning and planning. And many of you probably have an instructional design as well. The, the basic premise behind backward design is that we start with the end in mind and then we work backwards. Uh, so with this, though, is I want to teach you this GRASP tool. GRASP is an acronym, though, that can help you design authentic assessments so you can grade with heart. Um, so the next several slides are going to help us review GRASP, and then we're going to practice. Um, oh, okay. Oh, great. Now everybody's pictures are coming up. Awesome. And no pressure. You don't have to turn your camera on, but you can if you want. So let's take a look at this. So GRASPS is an acronym and it really helps us plan these authentic assessments. So it starts with thinking about, okay, what's my goal? What do I want the students to achieve? Okay. Then the R, what's the role? What's the student's role in the task? Okay, the audience, who's the student's target audience from this assessment? The S is situation. Okay, so what's the context, the challenge? P is the performance part. So this is a critical, what's the students are gonna create or actually develop? And then lastly is the S, the standard. So what's the criteria that they're going to be judged? So this is a great acronym. There's lots of resources in our Wakelet page as well that you're gonna utilize here in a few minutes. But just again, just to be prepared, you'll be able to access all of this information. So again, this is just another great um, visual, pretty much what I just showed, just in a different format um, to give us a sense of looking at that grid. But what I'd really like to do is show you this example. So this is an example for, okay, just again, generally speaking, science across the board. I'm sure many of you are science faculty across in different content areas, but let's just look at this on a very kind of big picture global level as an example. So this could be something that you might choose to give, maybe you develop. So this is just the brainstorming part, and then you refine it from there. But the goal is to determine the best solution for evaluating water quality and usability for recreational purposes in your city. The role, the students actually in the assessment are the director of the water authority. So they're now taking on this, this additional role. The audience are members of the city council. So they're going to make a final decision, and maybe they actually have to develop the report. 
The situation is they're going to have to plan and assess the water quality from at least five different freshwater locations in your city, conduct experiments, write a report for non-scientists on your findings and recommendations. And then the product, identified experiments, test results from five water samples. They have it to do a written or an oral report and analysis, right? How powerful this is versus just giving a quiz about how to have them write an essay about water quality, right? This is much more powerful. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here for, or I'm, not, I'm just gonna stop sharing those slides for a second. And I wanna go ahead and I wanna pull up the Wakelet page. And on the Wakelet page, there are two documents here that, um, that you're gonna wanna have access to. But this one is, um, this will take you to a link that looks like this. And this is a PDF. Um, I try, I was gonna put it in a Google Doc, but the formatting of the boxes did not come out as well as I wanted. Um, oh, great, we can share that again. Kamal, could we share that Wakelet page link again for folks so they can have access to that? That would be great. And um, you can, so I'm gonna share this with you now. We're gonna practice, we're gonna go, um, we're gonna practice and actually do this for a few minutes. Um, so you can, you can actually download this yourself and turn it into a Word doc. You can actually save it as a typeable PDF if you want, or if you'd like, just go ahead and pull out something to write on, to brainstorm, because what we're gonna do now for a few minutes, um, yes, you will, um, Samantha, you'll have access to this Wakelet um, forever, as long as you want it, as long as you've got the link. So we'll make sure that you've got it. Um, is what I'd like folks to do is we're gonna, in just about one minute, we're gonna break into breakout rooms. The breakout rooms are really just to give you a space to go, um, and I want you to I want you to brainstorm a, a an authentic assessment using grasps. We're going to be in these breakout rooms for about I'm thinking maybe eight minutes now, Kamal, just based on time. Um, and what I'd like you to do is, if you're comfortable, and there'll be big enough breakout rooms, you know, so you don't feel like there are going to be like. 10 people or so, if you wanna brainstorm and talk to others, introduce yourself, say, this is my, my area of expertise, and this is what I'm thinking about designing, awesome. We just wanna provide a space where you can start kind of hashing these ideas out that what might be an authentic assessment that you can use come fall. Think about what you're teaching in the fall and what's an, an assessment that you can design that you could use in one of your courses thinking about this grass, this using this grass tool, okay? So looking at our time, it's 2.28. I think let's, um, let's take until um, two, let's take until two, come on, let's do, I'm gonna, I'm just looking at our time. So let's do 2.35, okay? Just to keep it easy and we'll keep, so we'll do about seven minute breakout room. Okay, I'm kind of just so I have enough time to get through my session here today. Um, if you don't wanna have your camera on, you don't feel like talking to others, no worries, but stay in the session. Trust me, when you come back, the last 20 minutes are gonna be awesome and more information about rubrics. So we just wanna provide you a space to talk to others, connect with others, other faculty, and get some ideas. All right, so um, questions before we go into our breakout rooms. Okay, we will stay in here in case so. So I'm now looking at 229. Let's take till two, let's take till 237. Come on, like, so I just wanna give a good, let's do, we'll do eight minutes. Okay, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. Okay, we're, can't get, can't get, Sophia, you can't get the PDF. Um, the PDF won't open. Is that what it is? I wanna make sure, can maybe folks give me a heads up if, oh, I also wanna show this the underneath, you can take a look, this is what we just talked about, the steps in designing a cornerstone task using grasps, this is also a great resource. Okay, great, so folks can go into their breakout rooms and let me see, oh, you maybe, yeah, you can need to sign into the wakelet. You shouldn't have to, but just in case, oh, it wouldn't open in Safari. Thank you, Lorraine, for sharing this. It made me, okay, Sophia, thank you. Maybe. Okay, feel free to stay in everybody. Oh, go ahead, Irene, please. No, I was going to say maybe they can try to open it in uh, Chrome. Uh, yeah, and it says, oh, it doesn't work in Safari, Mac person. Oh, me too, that's so weird, but I'm using Chrome. So good, yeah. thank you for the, thank you everybody for these, these clues. Okay, so go ahead and do your breakouts. If you'd like everybody, we'll see you back in just a few minutes.
just want to bring everybody's attention that to join the breakout room, you need to click on the join uh, button. You have a message popping up on your screen. So do that. Yeah. Great. Great. And, and if, if folks don't, we'll, we'll come back together formally in five minutes and that'll give folks time in those breakout rooms to look at the grasps. And then we'll take it from there. And I'm going to go ahead and keep this up on my screen for folks that are still in here, just hanging out, which is okay. Stephanie. Yes. Hi, I'm so sorry. It's Emily Jockwell Jones. We met in a previous thing, but um, yes. I love you. Yes. And I, you were in that beautiful, you're always in a, an exotic background anyway, um, <laughs> but I, I love your stuff. So I just wanted to, I'm skipping the breakout room because I wanted to ask your opinion. I teach communications. Um, most of our uh, ass assessments are essay project and I do this, they get a scenario. It's mm -hmm. here's the problem, here's who you are, here's all the details of what communication has happened before or what the situation is with this person, you know, write an email, write a business letter, write a report, whatever they're, you know, or sometimes it's an oral mm -hmm. presentation, but mostly it's a written thing. So it really follows this. I, I'm looking forward to the bit on rubrics because I think that's where it falls apart. But um, I have a lot of trouble just getting students to put themselves in that situation or getting them to transfer mm. their knowledge or to really like to take it seriously almost. Like it's just, it's a required course in most cases. They just want the grade. They don't actually care if they can ever write an email or they write a beautiful email for the assessment. And then the next email they send me is just an atrocious gobbledygook with no capitals and no subject and whatever. So I'm just wondering how I can sort of, if I've already got this down, how I can sort of take it to the next level to sort of get the student impact, if you have any ideas. <laughs> Yeah, Emily, that's a great question. Here's my first go to and maybe we've taught maybe you've done this so I'm not sure but at our university we have a great um, it's called CSEL. it's our um, community engaged um, learning center. And so what to up it and make it more relevant I've actually teamed with CSEL and made my projects legit so they're actually like emailing real people they're going to the real meetings they're having to wear real like nice you know what i mean it's not okay. just a made-up thing for my class and then what's really cool at my university and again i'm not sure what's where you are but they have um our students can then graduate with like a c-cell endorsement on their diploma or on their um on their um yeah on their diploma yeah okay. so on their degree and so it's um it it I, I agree. And what I found, because this semester I did a real, I did a real one and it was like, I couldn't believe what happened. Like they took it to a whole nother level beyond anything that, anything I ever expected. Yeah. And Emily, I would say if you'd like, why don't we touch base after this and I can send you some examples of those direct, um, I would love how that. I wrote those our, um, out and everything. Mm -hmm. Our uh, we have a public private partnerships program. I'm in a community college in Canada, so it's a little bit different. It's very like technical applied learning. Um, our version of college is sort of the very, almost tr more trades and sort of uh, yes. applied sure. learning oriented. Um, but we, our new buzzword is experiential learning, which it sounds like that's what you're saying, where they're actually in the community. Um, and uh -huh. uh, there's a lot of administrative uh issues around that, but I would love to touch yes. base with you and, and just get a sense um, of even what I could sort of take back to my colleagues and my administrators around a similar sort of, we don't have a C-cell, but something, we have a few other departments that might, that might fit in with that we could um, look at. So thank that you. Would be I, I do totally just, for me, it would even be if, if just, if another teacher in another class could also right? Like be on yes. them. Like, why am I the only one telling them they can't write? Why do they have eighties in every other class and a 50 in my class? Because they're getting yes. on multiple choice or short yep. answer where they're yep. looking for keywords. And I'm the only one saying, this is not a sentence. You have no introduction. Yep. What the heck yep. are you saying? <laughs> totally. totally. Anyway, Let's I will definitely talk out. after thank because yeah, yes, please, so because I've got some great ideas and thank you for coming again. I know um, I, it's great I, to and I, I, yes. I didn't know it was you. I just came in and then I saw you and I was like, oh, it's Stephanie. Cause you're, I, I loved it. So, um, I'm glad to be awesome. here. Thank you for those ideas and I'll let you get back to the awesome. large group, but I great. appreciate it. Emily. No, this was great. I'm sure other people appreciate it. Um, come on, let's go ahead and close that breakout room now. I think that um, just based on, or maybe give a two minute warning, Kamal, let's do that. Can we do that first or is it too late? Did you already hit? No, I'm just gonna- Oh, go ahead, Irene. 
Uh, I just wanted to jump in because I noticed that a few people didn't join the breakout room and of course no pressure, but just wanted to make sure like for the second yeah. breakout room, I, and the I, I posted in the chat, like if you, how to join the breakout room, and my assumption, everybody here wants to be here, but for the next breakout room, if you need help, please share in the chat, or you can go to the breakout, uh, click on breakout room and uh, just, you know, click join. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll fill out time. I'm seeing time too. We'll kind of see how this rolls um, for that second room mm -hmm. and how questions play out and things. Um, this is fantastic, everybody. As folks are coming on, we'll close those out in just a minute. And um, thanks everybody. This is great, great so far. Um, let me go ahead and just clear, clear, there we go. Awesome, everybody. Okay. Now let's go ahead and close those. That would be great. But I'll close in 60 seconds. Y yeah, that sounds great. You all are hearing the fresh coffee being ground in the background. <laughs> oh, I wish I could smell it. <laughs> it is. It's typical. It's like delicious in here right now. I will say um, it's pretty neat. And I've been, um, we're staying in a, in a pretty rustic campground where, uh, so this is kind of a neat, a neat treat to be in here today. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Great, everybody. So folks are coming on back in. Mm -hmm. Yep, I see the numbers going up. Welcome back, everybody. Yep. Folks are coming on back in, which is great. Mm -hmm. Ten seconds. Awesome. Okay, everybody. Welcome back. And I hope that you found that time beneficial, even just to make one new connection with somebody or share an idea. Um, I know for me, these Course Hero Educator Summits are critical to me going back in the fall and making connections with folks. So um, I'm so glad. Um, this is great. And again, keep type, use the, I see some things coming into the chat. Um, <laughs> right on, Keith, I see there. Um, feel free to type in, again, some of the ideas that you talked about. Um, what are some of the authentic ideas? Great, because again, grading with heart, it means we're coming to this with compassion. And I also want to state too that grading with heart and authentic assessments is not, does not mean give every, giving everybody an A, right? Um, oh my gosh, that's so funny, Ellen. Um, it does not mean giving everybody an A. It is about making these authentic and real where our students can really bite into these assessments. It actually, I think it honors the student more so versus just um, a traditional standard assessment. So again, um, Let's go ahead and we'll keep moving on. I'm mindful of our time. So the beauty of using this approach, it empowers students to take ownership of their own learning. The learning experience is meaningful, relevant, and practical. And we assess the actual learning experience, right? So we don't necessarily need to teach then assess, rather you assess the actual learning experience. Um, there, this isn't the session per se where we talk about the difference between diagnostic, formative, and summative assessments, but um, we can definitely talk more about that. You can reach out to me later because we use all of those, but keeping in mind that for this particular session, authentic assessments, that could be any of those that we're, 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 we're thinking about designing us assessments that help our students really master the content that we're teaching. Awesome. I love, keep asking each other questions. This is fantastic. Now, this is the alignment piece that I was talking about, right? So when we are designing these assessments, we have got to think about the criteria and the outcomes first, right? Whatever your, your course, your content area, your discipline, whatever those standards are, the criteria that you use to guide how you teach and prepare students to, gen to, to enter the workforce, that has to align. That has to align to the uh, evaluation and it has to link to the teaching method. It can, Again, it, it can't be these, this, this, um, these separate pieces. So I will warn you what I call the twin sins. And this actually comes from, um, from backward design. We don't wanna start with planning the learning experiences first. 
Okay, we, we, we don't wanna do that because we get lost in those learning activities first. And we also don't wanna get lost in, we have to cover so much information. So think deeply about what are the outcomes and the criteria? How do I design an assessment to help my students meet that outcome? And then I think about the method. The method comes last, which is a bummer for me because that's the funnest part of what we do is creating these learning experiences. But again, we wanna think about them and that they are forever connected and aligned and unbreakable. Okay, so you can, you can read this. Um, again, I'm mindful of our time here and I wanna get to rubrics. But again, we want to, I call, it's called the golden chain. And so we wanna be aware of when we're creating our assessments, you know, do, do, do our assessments follow this golden chain? Okay, so let's, we've talked about authentic, relevant and real world assessments, but where do I start? And then what do I do with the data once I get it? Or how do I grade this? Like, how do I even, what, what do I do? So um, let's, I'm gonna come here. So we wanna talk about, we're gonna you you can use a rubric. Now, many of you, I'm sure you have seen rubrics and you probably utilized rubrics in the past. Utilizing a well-crafted rubric is the key to your success as a faculty. And in my opinion, it helps manage my stress level because it takes out so much of that subjectivity, helps me be very objective and I'm totally grading only on what I wanted to grade from the assessment. Often sometimes when we grade without a rubric, all this other stuff shows up. We think about, oh, that student came and did this, or I know that student's got this going on in their life and this and this and this. Yes, that's all important, but it's also really critical that we focus on what are the exact skills and knowledge that the students needed to learn from that assessment. I like to say that a rubric helps keep me honest. The rubric keeps me honest. So, um, so again, a rubric is it's a quality continuum and it's usually a scale of possible points and with a range of different criteria. So let's take a look. Um, let's take a look at this. So currently, let me ask you this question. What are your challenges with assessing your students? So currently, what, what do you find are your current challenges when you are thinking about you've, you've given a test or you've given a project? How, what, what is a challenge for you? Feel free to throw those into the chat real quick. Yes, Paulette, excellent. And you know what? I remember in my, early in my career, I was hesitant about giving samples um, because I didn't want them to copy and things, but I do find that having a sample does help. Okay, so we've got, yeah, performance. Oh, who said that? Ellen, you are so right. Getting them to read the rubric. That's a whole nother workshop where I've got a whole activity I do um, with annotating where we go over the rubric. Or if you have time, you can have students actually create the rubric with you. But that's time suck. You know, you have to have time for that. Um, biggest challenge, dealing with the weight of the exam. Yes, versus the projects. Totally. Um, the technical students doing all this with a large class. Ellen, you are so right. You are so right. You know, doing this with a class of 100, 150 is much different than when you've got a seminar class with 15 students, right? Um, and so um, th this is key. Excellent, everybody. So thank you for throwing this, um, these into the chat. Okay, so, um, okay, so we wanna be aware of um, when we're creating our rubrics that, um, that and again, I'm kind of, I'm squeezing so much into this workshop in the, in the <laughs> we should, I hope that you all follow up with me after because if there's something that you're like, oh, I didn't quite get that, or I'd love to talk to Steph a little bit more about this, please has it, don't hesitate to reach out to me because um, I am going through this much faster than probably I typically would. But we want to think about when we're creating our rubrics, like, again, what is the rationale for doing this? What are my course objectives? And, and even more importantly, you know, why, how does that rubric help me assess my outcomes? So um, the reason why rubrics can be really powerful is because it, again, gives choice. Um, it's real world. Um, and again, thinking about how are we creating these capstone and culminating evaluation moments and those, these rubrics really can help us get there. Okay, so let's talk about this. And hopefully we should have some time today to give you some time to practice and then we'll because we've got about 15 minutes left. Okay, so rubrics are these marking schemes. They can be used for any assessment 
and they're fantastic for these grasps assessments that we just practiced today earlier in this session. Um, they help us assess our learning outcomes and it's a range of formats. So um, rubrics, and keep in mind, rubric is different than a checklist. Um, thank you, David. Awesome for throwing that in there. Please share resources even outside of what you see in the wakelet um, with each other. This is fantastic. So when we are creating our rubrics, um, categories to assess. So we want to think about the different components. So when we're giving that grasps assessment or when we think about that, what out of that assessment do we, if we go back to that science, that science example, we need to assess that they know how to write the report. They're actually doing the experiments. Have they actually done the five water samples, right? Um, yes, Ellen, we definitely can. Um, and then you can see what, to write it, we've got a criteria. So it's got, we might have accuracy, completeness, supported with research. Um, and then often on our rubric, there's levels or points. So you'll see this from, and it's usually three to five levels. I would not go any more than five. It's just too much for our faculty brains to handle. Excellent, Herbert, sharing single point rubrics. This is fantastic. Um, yes, and I have, Sheila, that I'd love to do that in another course. I just did that this semester in a diversity and education class. We had them um, grade themselves with a rubric and it was awesome. Um, so here's an example. Okay, here's an example of what an analytic rubric might look like. Again, thinking about that grasp design because you're trying to create a rubric that you can use to then assess or grade that, um, that, that performance assessment. So we've got the criteria usually is gonna be on the left side of cross on the top are gonna to be the score. I've seen it other ways, but it's up to you. Yes, Cheryl, I rubric, and that is one of the tools. Let me show you all everyone here in this wakelet page right now. Um, you will see there is a bunch of resources here that I found that I really like to create rubrics. Um, there is this website right here, PBIS, which um, is great, but there's a ton online free rubric makers. You, this link is in the, in the Wakelet page for you to have access to. And here's an example of rubric maker, which I just love. So for example, I would click new and, um, and now I can start, go ahead and I can type in and it'll create the rubric for me. Also, I wanted to show you, notice that it's post-secondary. I share this because for those of us, you know, um, a lot of some of this work is in K-12 and it's not as um, advanced um, for us in higher ed. So I really like this one because it gives us this post-secondary option. Okay, let's head on back. Um, here we go. Awesome. So um, what I'd like to do I think I'm going to hold on the second breakout room, everybody, just because of um, our time. And what I'd like to do is I have a short video that I'd like to show you and then we about rubrics, because I think this it's only two minutes. And I think this will be really beneficial. And then we will come back together. So um, I'm kind of winging it. So let's go for it. Here we go. Oh, and I'll just share this. If for those of you that um, teaching channel is an awesome, awesome, awesome incredible website. I will say a lot of it is K, K kindergarten through 12th grade resources, but the, all of the secondary stuff is definitely applicable for the work that we do in higher ed. And I'm going to share this video and then we will come back together. We have one week until our project is due, so we're going to do what's called a mid-project rubric review, okay? When I design my rubrics, I think about what I want their final project to look like first. So what you're gonna do with this is you're gonna look at it, and it says calculations. I'm gonna write in there what I think, if I were to get full credit, what would that look like? I make a list of everything that so I want in their final project and everything I want I to be ask. included, and then I think about how much each part needs to be weighted. If you're doing the architecture project, preliminary sketch of model, what all would you have to have to get all 10 points? The sketch of the drawing already done? Mm-hmm. What should be on your sketch? The, the shapes scale. that are provided. Scale. And the shapes you need to have any? All the shapes you need to have, good. The architecture project had students building many different 3D shapes. And they had to find the volume and surface area and then convert centimeters to feet. The soccer ball had students finding surface area and then volume 
and then they had to compare it to the actual size of a real soccer ball. The song or poem had students analyzing different geometric topics and then making sure they understood all the geometric vocabulary. The complexity you need to write on his. You need to go through each aspect and write on his for peer review, okay? So you're going to switch, you might want to switch computers so you can look at your fractals. Neither of us have done the writing okay. assignment, so what do we, what will we put there? Maybe look through the writing assignment and give each other some tips. On these particular projects, I really wanted a writing assignment included in each one, and so I made sure on each project the writing assignment was weighted equally, and then just kind of went from there. We only have about three more days to work on this in class, so anything you want to talk about with your group, you need to talk about now, because the rest of this is going to be individual, okay? All right, wrap it up, you got about five minutes. Awesome. So that was great to be able to get a sense and, and, um, and see that. Um, <clears throat> so again, you know, this is very, it's participatory, it honors our student. And that's what, when we talk about grading with heart, right? It's remembering the who is at the, who is at, who is at the root of our assessment and it's our student. Um, and so this is, this is critical. It's critical that we, we keep that in mind. Now, um, I just have a couple thoughts here um, as we wrap up and then I wanted to, there's been some fantastic resources shared in the chat. I wanna make sure we've got at least five minutes to open up for questions um, and comments. Um, I just wanna say balance is key. And you know, as we're, I'm mindful about saying, as we're coming out of the pandemic, which I do believe, I know that things are, crazy and even looking at that video, how wonderful it is to see all those students in a classroom without masks on, right? Um, and as all we're heading into the fall, things are still very uncertain. So remember, balance is key. Be gentle on yourself as, as you are trying to create ways of connecting with your students and assess on a deeper, more purposeful and more deliberate level. And what I would say is start small, start small. So for one course that you're teaching in the fall, Think about an authentic assessment that you can create, you can create using grasps and a really good rubric. Then next semester, you choose another one. Um, it's starting small. So and again, remember that that balance is key. So why, why are rubrics our best friend? <laughs> it gives the student with the assignments, they know it's expected. No surprises. Now, again, we joked about we got to get them to read it, but we'll do that. Um, use as a guide. And why is this, why is it our best friend? It, may, it makes marking easy and efficient for us. And it is critical. Our time is so valuable. And um, equity in marketing, right? Again, it, it keeps us objective um, and it's consistent. So having that rubric, it just keeps me honest and allows me again to really think about the student is at the root of the grade, not me, which is critical. Oh, my, oh, thanks. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Now I'll put it bigger. There we go. There it is. Thanks. Um, thanks, Irene. So as we, um, oh, there we go. So as we are getting ready to wrap up here today, um, and I'm, I'm mindful of binaries and, and these two arrows really kind of give us these two choices, but, you know, we, we can't go back. There is no going back to 2019. And we are, and this is exciting for us as faculty. It's, this is what's, what now, right? What, what do we do now? How do we show up? What is this way that we want to move into this, to the, um, into this new world? And it's very exciting for us because our students are craving and they are hungry for authenticity. They're craving and hungry for us to connect with them. And they are craving and they are hungry for us to um, provide them this tools and the skills that they need to be successful in life. So. I want to thank you all so much for coming to this session today. I want to make sure now we have a few minutes um, for questions, comments, anything folks want to share. Like you've had, you found a great rubric website that you think everybody should have. Awesome. Because that's what this community is about. I only get better as faculty by spending time with all of you. That's the gift of this. So um, questions, comments, anything at all. Um, we've got a few minutes left and I'm on, I'm able to stay on. Um, and that also gives you a few more minutes to, before you jump into your next session. But any questions at all, feel free to unmute and I am here. I, I'm, I'm, and or if, I was gonna say, if anybody has any glacier tips, if there's like a must glacier national park thing I need to do, go ahead and put it in the chat. So I make sure I do that too. <laughs> 
just wanted to say I'm seeing a lot of, of course, comments in the chat and you've been on top of that, uh, Stephanie. There is actually a question that came in earlier from Alan. Um, um, I would love to go over rubrics in class, but for a fully online course, asynchronous, no class meetings, I'm not sure how to do this. And I think, yeah, the question was for everybody. Has anybody dealt with this? Yeah, you know, and I'd love to hear from other folks what I've done, and unfortunately is a video, you know, of me going through the rubric. You could also do a chat if it's an asynchronous class, like in, I use Canvas as our LMS system. So sometimes I'll put a rubric into a discussion post and have folks discuss the rubric and make comments on that. Um, you could also do a lot like um, a Google Doc where folks are annotating. Um, I've also discovered Cami, which is an awesome shared Google uh, shared annotation tool so you can see what folks' questions are. Those are my first go-to. Oh, and Slack. Thanks, Sarah. Yes, yeah, Slack for sure. Um, Hi, I yes, put into are... the chat, but Great. is could you send us your contacts? You said to follow oh. up, but... Yes, in fact, let me go ahead. I'm going to put it directly into the chat right now. Thank you. You're welcome. So, so that's this my, was... There, Fantastic. Great, please. Thank you. Oh, thank yeah. you. I'm so glad that you came. All right, everybody, look, I'm just giving you my cell too. You can send me crazy glacier memes or fun rubrics. How about that? <laughs> and there's my, and you can also find me. Um, I've got a Course Hero. You can follow me here on Course Hero. I've got a Course Hero page and account um, that I'm always trying to bolster. So with my own content, not with likes and people, but just feel free. And I'm also on LinkedIn and Facebook, but LinkedIn's probably the best, you know, for this setting, um, unless you want to see my bear encounter on Facebook, which I'm happy to share. <laughs> um, awesome. Oh, and I see Janice. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm, my, I'm, uh, I'm also, I'm happy to talk about peer-to-peer. -peer. I've done some peer-to-peer, -peer, I've done a lot of peer-to-peer -peer grading and peer-to-peer -peer rubric work, so we can talk about that. Oh, yes. Thank you, Michelle, for that tip. Um, other I questions. I also see another comment, uh, Stephanie, in the chat uh, from David. Okay. Um, he's saying, Stephanie, could you make some comments about how your insights ideas scale to large enrollment courses? Um, how, how they could be scaled to large enrollment? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, here's my here's a couple of my thoughts. One, and again, I and it, this is like if 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 all the stars aligned, if you have access to TAs, okay. Um, if you have access to TAs, put in and try and get that. Part of that is, is talking, I know for me, like when I've taught large classes and I've said to my department chair, hey, I really want to do this assessment. I need three TAs to be able to make this happen. Um, again, that isn't the case for everybody. But again, maybe um, if you've got a large class, if there's a way that you can um, maybe differentiate. So maybe that some of the class is taking a more for traditional assessment while some are doing a performance assessment or authentic just to manage your grading, or you could, you know, and or maybe these are big conversations as when we have these large scale classes, what is the outcome? And what are we trying to get these students to create when they're with us in those large classes? Um, awesome, everybody. Harsha, you bet. You please set up with me to meet. Um, so I think that I, I will, um, I'm not sure who asked that question, but um, I will say, I think that's a real challenge. I think that's one that we need to talk about as we're rethinking higher ed and being authentic and what, can we be authentic in a class of 250 students? I think we can, I think it just takes a lot more work, but we definitely makes it much harder to create authentic assessments and we can't grade them. We just don't have the ability or the time. Um, Patrice, yes, um, there's a question about the, um, workshop being shared, and I think they're all going to be shared after this. After the summit is over, they'll be live or not recorded sessions. After is that correct, Elaine? Yep. Yes. Awesome. Uh, we will have okay. sessions recorded and Great. shared. Yeah. Awesome. And I see now it's three. So I want to say thank you all so much. Please, please, please stay in touch. You all, you all are my, uh, you all are my group. You know, I couldn't make it without my course hero group, um, knowing that we're all out there all over the world trying to make this world a better place. Somebody's got to do it. Let it be us. Thank you all so much. Um, be safe out there. And I can't wait to see you in, um, over the summit over the next day or so.
Thanks, everybody.